You're tuned in to the Gallagher Power to Farm podcast. Our animal management team discusses the hot issues with farmers and agricultural leaders. And we share the knowledge that will give you the power to run a resilient and sustainable farm business. I'm Mark Harris, Global Marketing Manager for Gallagher Animal Management and part-time dairy farmer. Today we're talking about regularly weighing your stock and using EID as a way to make more informed decisions to achieve your farming goals. Pyro dairy farmers Tessa and Brendan Hobson have done just that. Over the last couple of years, they've moved from a pretty basic sort of a weighing system to a more fully automated one, a modern weighing system. And today they're joining us to talk about the results they've achieved and share their story. Welcome, Brendan and Tessa. Thanks for joining me today. So guys, um, could you tell us a bit about why you chose to go farming and what you're doing where you're at today? So we, I guess, both uh, grew up on dairy farms, so had had the rural upbringing. And I guess if I had it my way, I, I would have left school and gone farming, but uh, got a trade. Currently, we are equity owners and lower to share milkers on a 108 hectare dairy farm in Pyra, milking sort of 315, 320 at peak. And yeah, I guess just really enjoy um, being outside and being around the animals and farm life. So that's why we decided to pursue a career in uh, the dairy industry. Awesome. And what was your trade that you did, Brendan? I did a building trade. So yeah, qualified carpenter by trade. I did six years of that in in Hamilton. So And you've been farming for? Seven years full time. Very good. And what about you, Tessa? What's your route been into the dairy sector? Yeah, well, I guess the same growing up on a dairy farm um, and then lived in Hamilton for a few years. I went to university there. But we did a bit of travel before we came back and started dairy farming. I think we wanted to get a bit of taste of seeing the world. Uh, And then an opportunity came up to work on a dairy farm for Brendan in Te It was a high input system five split carving farm. And I worked at an accounting firm in town before the opportunity to yeah, be equity owners and lower order share milkers came up here in Pyro. Fantastic. So it sounds like you guys have got some real good skill sets that you've brought into farming too. Today, we're going to talk a bit about your young stock. Can you tell us a bit about what your young stock program looks like? What are you rearing and trying to achieve with your young stock program? So we rear 22% of our herd. So we're with SPS, so our approving scheme through LIC. So we have to have a minimum of 18% into the herd. We DNA test our calves with SPS. Our herd is DNA tested. Currently our calves are read on milk, hay and meal from birth. Around 10 weeks old, all the calves are weighed and the biggest start to be weaned from 90 kilos and then staggered weaning until the smallest ones reach about 100 kilos. They go to grazing in Pataru from early December and come back in calf on the 1st of May. But this year we've decided to keep the calves on farm until 1st of May next year. Okay, so you've sort of, you've got um, your rising ones on, on farm and then your, the rising twos are, are sent off and, um, and grazed off farm in Pataru. So that's quite a way away. How far would that be? Uh, it's about an hour 15 to get down to Pataru, so I guess that's a little bit of reasoning around keeping calves on farm, summers that we've been getting, um, just having a bit more control over monitoring ones that aren't doing as well as they should be. So done a little bit of research and we've put some chicory in for our calves this summer, so they're going to camp on chicory, grass silage and probably a bit of palm kernel um, when needed. I guess the big reasoning for this is just analysing the trends of the last four years since we've had the ability to weigh our stock. They start off really well, but that first summer is always, they sort of drop below uh, the line. So yeah, just trying to keep them above those growth rate lines. And we feel that we can probably do that by doing that ourselves. So we touched on weighing there. Let's drop back. What were you doing at the start in regard to um, assessing the the weight of these animals before you had the, the scales that you've recently purchased? I distinctly remember the first calving we had here and I had a tape measure and I would go around to the calves while they were feeding and I think I might have done maybe half a dozen or a dozen around, you know, a certain part of their 
bellies to get an idea of what they'd weigh. That was our starting point for weaning them off milk. Yet no scales in that first season, and it was our second season, I think, we thought surely there's got to be a better way, an accurate way, just something better than a bit of a guesstimation with a tape measure. (laughs) And I guess that was sort of a little bit of a flow-on effect because our stock weren't quite where they needed to be going forward. So then we sort of started to analyse whether it was us that hadn't done the right job. And, And without weighing, you can't really pinpoint where you're going wrong. So that was the big reason for looking at a better system, really. How did those problems appear? Were they not getting a calf or were they coming into the herd not quite where you wanted them to be? What was the problem? Yeah, their live weight targets weren't where they needed to be. So entering the herd below um, 90% live weight, so therefore on the backward foot from sort of day one. And I guess if you're chasing results, you need to know where things are going wrong before you can change. And um, I guess over the last three or four years, we've continued to change things. We've changed grazier and they do a really good job of them. And obviously now targeting, throwing more feed at the calves going through that first summer because that's sort of where we've noticed that the the drop is on the weighing graphs. So, And I think that first summer when we hadn't weighed and they were up at grazing, they were local here then. They were just around the corner, which was quite handy. But every time we'd go and see them, we thought, oh, they probably could be better but we didn't know if that's because we hadn't grown them on the milk properly first and it's just a follow-on effect or was there an issue with the grazier, a grazier that we had no evidence to back ourselves on. It was just what we thought, how we'd hoped they would look compared to the reality of how they were looking. So so you wanted an objective way of assessing where, where your animals were at. Basically, yeah. Yeah, and I guess without having that data, we were the only ones really visually seeing them other than the grazier. And obviously being fairly new to running the whole operation ourselves, the big thing for us was, oh, yeah, they look all right. I think they're where they need to be. And every time I'd go up there, I was kind of like, oh, yeah. And then it wasn't sort of until we kind of realised they weren't really where they needed to be. And they could be better. And they weren't going to gain all this extra weight at the tail end, like everyone kept telling us, <laughs> yeah. um, that we were kind of like, well, the only way we're going to be able to do this is obviously comparing it to the growth weight targets, what our animal, our herd live weight is, and knowing where they need to be when they hit the ground first of May. So that was, yeah, the big reasoning around why we are chasing better gains. So did did that make the conversation a bit easier with the grazier once you had objective data? We've been with the same grazier for a little while now, but as is weighing, you're still going to have a small group of tail enders that are always going to be the ones that you keep an eye on. So every time we weigh at grazing, we always mark the ones that, and it probably is the bottom 10%, that are a little bit behind where they should be. Last year, we made the call in... March when they were weighed again um, to bring that group home and preferential feed them. And we managed to put uh, 1.8 kilos a day on them over six weeks with just throwing feed at them. So that was a cost to us, but it was also a string that we could pull to make sure that those heifers were, were where they needed to be when the others came home and joined them. So when it came to you know deciding on what weighing system you were going to get, How did you go about choosing a new system? We kind of went through and worked out what were we chasing? Were we chasing something that was going to be hard work, had to manually record everything, or were we chasing something that was obviously we're adding extra work into our already quite busy workload by weighing our stock, but at the same time we want to get those gains. So it was getting a system that was going to be quite automated, easily transportable, so We talked to our local suppliers about our options. I did a bit of research on the internet and that's where we sort of came to the decision that, yeah, the Gallagher was a good fit for the system we were all wanting with the EID wand that all synced to the EID on the animal. So it meant that no one was recording data. It minimised human error, but, yeah, I guess minimising that manual paper trying to write on a piece of paper when it's raining or whatever it is, it's never that great a combo. So, yeah, that's, yeah, I guess why we decided to go with the Gallagher TW1. 
the way platform and we went for the slightly bigger platform because it fitted better in our vet race and because we did want to weigh our herd as well. So we weren't just chasing weighing calves only. So, Tell us about the herd weighing. What's, what are you trying to achieve there? The year we got the scales, that was three years ago now, Brendan weighed the herd. So every milking for like a week or so, he drafted out a row of cows uh, and just run them over the scales. So that gave us our average herd weight of 450 kilos, and I guess the reasoning around that obviously goes back to um, needing to know what our heifers need to be entering the herd at. We can benchmark ourselves against production. So currently our cows are doing 90% of their live weight in production. Before that, even though we were sort of estimating they were around that 445, 450 it wasn't until we weighed that we actually got that figure. And I guess the big pinpointing factor for us also was the range. So off the top of my head, the range was about 350 to 650, which is huge when you're trying to get cows to all consume the same amount of feed and obviously be efficient at converting that feed and having the milk drop out the bottom. You know, some of those big girls that were 650 kilos, they definitely weren't pulling their weight, literally. (laughs) So I guess until we had that data, we weren't able to benchmark ourselves to improve. And it's probably getting that more even line of stock is how we think the scales are helping as well. And that starts with the calves, if we can help those tail enders catch up and have that more condensed even size of stock who are efficient at producing milk. (laughs) With your your targets that you're trying to achieve with your replacements, are you setting different targets depending on the breed composition of of each animal? And what is your herd? It must have a bit of a different mix, 350 through 650. Yeah, so we've got a bit of everything in there. Uh, There's no favouritism towards uh, any breed. I guess for us, now that we've sort of, we've had a fairly low empty rate the last few years, which has given us good culling options. You know, we have culled cows because of size. We run a Kiwi cross herd here, putting a little bit of Frisian back in this year just to try and get a little bit more size for production gains as well. There's a bit of Jersey, there's a bit of Frisian, and there's a bit of crossbred. So just trying to have that animal that sort of sits around that 450 to 500 kilos you know, we're still going to get a few that are a bit heavier than that, some of the, the more F12 plus animals. But, yeah, that's kind of where we're tracking. Mm. Okay. And do you set different targets for your calves depending on their breed or are you trying to keep a more consistent uh, breed of calf? So we keep an eye on the dairy and Z targets and at least match those. But you were showing me the other day with LIC how – they can adjust targets based on our live weight targets. So there's always that breed, and that was probably something that we, before we started weighing, was not really an excuse, but sort of, oh, we've got a more crossbred herd, you're going to get these big variances in size. That was the tricky one for us was, was it genetics the reason why there was such a variance in our stock, or was it just the fact that we weren't, growing them well enough, obviously us and the people we outsource to. When you don't have a full, you know, Frisian herd, you know, generally when you look at a full Frisian herd, the herd will be pretty close in size. You'll you'll have a smaller range variance, whereas for us, because we've got a bit of everything, that was sort of an excuse that was used over some of those tough summers. Oh, you've got a few jerseys in there. They're always going to be a bit lighter. And I guess that was, well, we know that, that's not a true factor because we've got some mm. we've got some big jerseys in our herd that match some of the Frisians, so and probably drop a bit more out the bottom too. So yeah, that was I guess where we sort of are trying to chase a more even line of stock. And that's why we've got a bit of both, because we can kind of manipulate our breeding a little bit to try and keep that size where it should be or where we want it to be. Okay, so in terms of tracking these weights then, it sounds like you've got some pretty definite targets in mind. How is that working with the runoff block? You're weighing at home yourselves. What are you doing with the animals that are down in Pataru? So our grazier has load bars down there 
And so we can just easily take our TW1 scale and EID reader and hook it up to his scales and run the stock over there. And like Brendan said, we will mark ones that aren't at the target weights that we need. Uh, and that's just for the grazier to keep an eye on them. And it gives us yeah, the opportunity like we did back in March to bring any home that we think need a bit more care. And so are you guys going down there and doing the weighing yourselves or how does that work? We do all the, generally do all the weighing and all the um, treatment, worm treatment and stuff. Um, so we're normally, unless the vets get called in, occasionally the grazier does it. But I like to get down there if I can at least every three months. So that's generally when we'll weigh. Um, we don't wait every six weeks. I guess that probably comes back to a little bit of time because they are an hour and a half away. It's nearly a day trip for me to get down there, weigh all the stock and get home, and, and sometimes that's not always possible depending on what's happening on farms. So I guess for us it would be great to have our stock closer so that we could weigh more often because a lot can change in three months, let alone six weeks. So I guess if we can monitor changes, especially animals that go backwards through those mm. stress periods, yeah, that would be something that we would, yeah, obviously quite keen to pursue. The rising ones that are at home, uh, are you weighing them every three months as well or what, what's the policy there? While the calves are on farm, as Tess mentioned, we weigh the first lot and then stagger wean after that. And then generally they will get weighed every six weeks um, when they come through the yards for treatment. So while they're on farm, we're weighing our young stock every six weeks until they generally go away at the start of December. But obviously with us deciding to keep calves on farm this summer, we're going to have the option and the ability to continue to weigh them the whole way through till 1st of May next year. And I guess that's mm. where we're hoping we're going to get a lot better growth rates, a lot more consistent line of stock, and I guess we also have the option to pull animals out at home, even though they're going to be getting pretty well fed, to maybe just try and catch uh, some of those tail enders up if there are some of those tail enders. So. Hey, very good. So what would you say about um, the impact that weighing these stock regularly has had on your business? You know, if you think back to when you were using the tape, Tessa, to now where you're, you're getting these weights, what do you think it's meant for you guys as a farming business? Oh, I think it just gives you a bit more peace of mind that you've got the resources to make accurate decisions. Are your cows hitting the herd in better shape now since you've been doing this process? It means that we're getting a more consistent animal. I suppose over the last four years, we're milking about 35, 40 cows less at peak, but still doing similar productions. So we're getting small gains, but as, as is everything, it's not an overnight change. There's still other factors that contribute to that, but at the same time, we feel like we we are getting somewhere and that the herd is really looking you know, quite uniform, which is where we're sort of wanting it to be. Because I guess for me, I've got to look at them every single day as they walk through the shed. And if there's, a, there's an animal that you don't like, you're going to see that one animal every day. <laughs> Um, whether it's yeah size or, or whatever uh, might jump out at you, but I guess for me having that peace of mind that we've we've really put our best foot forward to grow our stock and and try and really perform. So this year's heifers are doing eighty two percent of the herd's average production. So we really feel that our financial investment in our scales has positive returns on our milk production and animal health. That's fantastic because I think the published figure is 75%, isn't it? So that's, that's showing you're doing pretty well yeah, with those heifers. Well done. Hey, so just in closing, um, what would you say to other farmers thinking about investing in, in the type of gear that you've got? What we would say is do it. Um, I guess you can't monitor what you don't measure. It's taken us a few years to kind of fully understand where our stock need to be. And now we've got that weighing data, we can make more informed decisions, as is the, the environmental changes and, and the things that are happening in the industry. These small gains that you're going to make might be the difference between you being a really profitable farmer and just the average farmer. 
And I'd probably um, get them asking themselves questions, you know, are they happy with how their stock are coming home from the grazier? Are they happy with how their heifers are carving down? Are they confident that they're allocating feed accurately based on live weight? All those little things add up to, well, big things at the end of the day, end of the season. We'd say being able to weigh your stock really just gives you data to use to make informed decisions and improvement in your business's performance, as we've seen with us. Oh, that's fantastic. Guys, thank you so much for talking to us today. I was pretty impressed to hear about some of those decisions that you're making. You know, you're weighing regularly, you're taking control of the situation with your grazier by keeping track of those weights. I liked hearing the story about how you brought some animals home and you preferentially fed them. So you're really not leaving the outcome to chance. You're making things happen and um, achieving that that milk production out of those first carvers. Obviously, that's really, really good result. So pleasing to hear about it. Really pleased that the use and uh, success you're getting out of those uh, TW scales. Well done. Thanks for talking to us. And I wish you guys every success for your future career in dairying. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mark. 10-4 rubber duck. Thanks for joining us on the Gallagher Power to Farm podcast. Learn more about today's topic and our panel guests by visiting www.am.gallagher.com.